What causes battery fires in phones, electric cars, and passenger planes? Electric cars catch fire less often than fossil fuel cars, but lithium ion battery fires are intense. This Dutch fire crew simply drowned this car in a tank. It takes the water of just one engine, that's about 500 gallons, to put out a conventional vehicle fire. But it can take anywhere from four engines worth to 40 engines worth, 20,000 gallons, to put out an electric vehicle. Sometimes it might have to be that we just let it burn out. And in the race to prevent a climate catastrophe, how can we make better batteries to store renewable energy? Solar and wind are now the cheapest sources of electricity, and to take over, they need long-lasting energy storage. Currently, 99% of electricity is stored as water pressure. This is what 20,000 liters per second looks like. Now imagine 25 times more water. That's how much can flow through one of the world's biggest batteries, deep inside a mountain in Wales. Driving in is like entering a Bond villain's base, and the central cave is vast. At night, water is pumped up the mountain to a lake at the top, and during the day, it flows back down, releasing the energy. These yellow weights weigh 15 tons, and two of them are used to close the valve. The station can power around two million homes, and can turn on that immense power in 10 seconds. But we can't build enough electric mountains. They require large lakes at the top and bottom with the right vertical distance and minimal horizontal distance to avoid wasting energy. They also need to be close to towns to avoid transmission losses. And fresh water is valuable. This energy vault uses bricks instead, each weighing 35 tons. 20 towers could provide 350 megawatt hours of storage, enough to power 40,000 homes for 24 hours. Other batteries in development store energy as heat, as compressed air, or by cooling air to the point where it liquefies. More compact traditional batteries are needed to slot into cities, but they're too expensive. And we already have too many electric car batteries that are difficult to dispose of. But these two problems could partially solve each other. An MIT study found that it would be cheaper to use old car batteries for renewable energy storage rather than building new ones. Car batteries can last decades longer than most cars. Here's how long Tesla batteries last, with each dot representing data from a real car. After 200,000 kilometers, most retain over 90% of their original battery capacity. The MIT study found that even if batteries decline to 80%, it makes financial sense to use them for renewable energy storage. But the batteries can't hold charge long enough to allow full reliance on renewable energy. And it's difficult to predict which ones might develop problems or catch fire quantum technology is now showing us the inner workings of batteries and how to improve them. It could have prevented the fire in this 787. Just after 194 people left the plane, a cleaner spotted smoke. A mechanic opened the equipment bay and saw flames rising from the batteries of the plane's auxiliary power unit. He grabbed a fire extinguisher but couldn't put it out. When firefighters used a thermal imaging camera to look through the smoke, they saw a small glowing ball of heat. And soon after extinguishing the fire, it restarted, the batteries hissing and spraying fluid which burnt a firefighter's neck. It took nearly two hours to control the fire and remove the battery. The cause of the problem was thermal runaway, with heat from a failing cell causing surrounding cells to fail. Investigators suspected that a defect introduced during the battery's production had caused a short circuit. The plane had made just 22 flights, and five days later, another 787 made an emergency landing in Japan after pilots saw a battery malfunction warning. The entire fleet was grounded, the first time the FAA had ordered this since 1979. 
Before taking off again, each battery cell was given vents to limit heat build-up, and the whole thing was put in a thick metal enclosure. Here, the steel is tested for containing an explosion. But these precautions aren't practical in electric cars and phones, and as battery cells are more densely packed, thermal runway becomes more likely. If manufacturing imperfections or dendrite growth causes a short circuit in a single cell, it can destroy the entire battery. To reduce the risk at home, fire services recommend not charging phones on bedding or flammables. Hard services are okay. And the trick to better, safer batteries is at the center of the quantum revolution. New sensors can show us what's going on inside batteries in incredible detail. Each sensor contains a cloud of atoms aligned by a polarized laser, like synchronized magnets. And magnetic fields created from tiny battery currents adjust the atoms in a measurable way. It can also see the tiny currents in our brains, which could help cure diseases and allow direct brain control of computers without the need for an implant. The insights are extraordinary. It was recently discovered that when a mother and baby interact, the frequencies of their brain waves synchronize, giving fresh meaning to the phrase, on my wavelength. In batteries, the sensors can identify defects during production and cells can be continually scanned during operation, with any faults quickly isolated to prevent fires. Another quantum breakthrough promises dramatically to increase battery range and lifespan. We've been held back by the strange mystery of emergence. A water molecule isn't wet but lots of water molecules are. Emergence shapes everything, galaxies, societies, thoughts, and batteries, and our greatest thinkers and supercomputers struggle with it. A strange example is liquid helium. At minus 270 degrees Celsius, it becomes a superfluid, climbing up walls and dripping through containers that would normally hold liquids. Once stirred, it will keep spinning forever. And it can also make a frictionless fountain which never stops. All the atoms behave the same way, removing any friction. But the flow of electrons in new forms of batteries is far more difficult to predict. This is the strange world of Conway's game of life. It follows simple rules. Cells must have two or three neighbors to survive, too many or too few, and they die. And a dead cell with three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. It creates incredible shapes, patterns, and ships. Last year, a new ship was discovered, called a doodah. Each square can be black or white. So on a 10 by 10 grid, there are two to the power of 100 possibilities. But following the rules, we only have to pick one. If we replace the squares with electrons, which can be in multiple states and multiple places at once, we have a problem. The rules would have to allow for an exponential number of possible positions, which would quickly overcome the world's most powerful computer. But for new quantum computers, it comes naturally. Using the states of particles instead of ones and zeros, they will precisely simulate new batteries, skipping years of experimentation. Quantum software developers are already developing algorithms to help researchers identify new battery materials. And our new control of nature will transform everything around us. This is 200 tons of molten pig iron, which is used to make the steel for our buildings, cars, and cutlery. For every ton of steel produced, nearly two tons of CO2 is emitted. And cement contributes around 8% of global carbon emissions, three times more than aviation. If cement were a country, it would be the third highest global emitter behind the US and China. Quantum computing promises to uncover greener production methods and a revolution in material design. And you are currently using a strikingly energy-hungry machine, the internet. It uses around 10% of the world's electricity, and this could double in just four years. 
This is the kind of data center where our emails and photos are stored. It's surrounded by a 20-foot concrete wall and has its own fire station. And the largest supercomputer uses as much electricity as a small town. It can power AI and accelerate drug discovery, but the energy costs are often too high. Training an AI can use the equivalent energy of five cars through their whole lifetime. And when it's in use, like predicting your Gmail text, energy use increases by orders of magnitude. You may have heard about Google achieving quantum supremacy. It reportedly performed a calculation in 200 seconds, which would have taken 10,000 years on a supercomputer. It was a carefully selected problem, not one with practical applications, but look at its energy use. Even based on IBM's claim that a supercomputer could complete the task in two days, it would have used 13 megawatts of electricity versus 25 kilowatts for the quantum computer. That's $78,000 versus 14 cents. Some firms are aiming to hack the chips in our phones into silicon qubits, which could eventually allow affordable home quantum computers. More on this in a future video. Quantum tech is also helping us see the world in new ways, and it's uncovering a huge hidden risk. Natural gas is a growing source of energy. It's mainly methane, which is 85 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. It's only clean if it's stored or burned. If just 3% of the gas leaks, it's worse than burning coal. But what's the total amount leaked? A new quantum gas camera can show us. First, it scans an area with a LiDAR laser at a wavelength that's absorbed by the gas but bounces off solid objects. Of the billions of photons fired, only a few come back. So normally, only range can be measured, as with some autonomous cars. But here, the laser is paired with a detector that can break down information contained in single photons, showing the size and concentration of gas clouds. In total, we add 51 billion tons of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere each year. That's roughly the same weight as half a million fully loaded aircraft carriers. Air pollution is far more deadly than previously thought. Tiny particles, less than one thirtieth the width of a human hair, can travel deep into the lungs and enter the bloodstream. They trigger inflammation as your system tries desperately to fight back. But these tiny intruders penetrate those defenses, lodging toxic compounds even deeper, sowing the seeds of cancer. They slide straight into your bloodstream, sabotaging your entire body. They inflame and constrict your blood vessels, increasing blood pressure until one day, causing a stroke. Some areas are reducing speed limits to bring pollution down, but better batteries bring more exciting solutions. While helicopter trips are a shortcut for the wealthy, electric drone taxis will be even better and far cheaper. They're expected to cost 90% less, be four times quieter and twice as safe, as they can keep flying if some of the motors fail. Once the infrastructure is established, 200,000 electric vertical takeoff vehicles are expected, and quantum enhanced radar will help keep all the new air traffic safe. Radar builds a picture based on the time it takes for signals to bounce back. Harnessing the precise timing of atoms could make it a thousand times more accurate, even showing drones and birds. And on the road, new quantum sensors can see through the ground, avoiding unnecessary roadworks. Atoms are so sensitive that the charge in their energy states reveals tiny variations in gravity caused by underground objects. They will also map underground water disrupted by climate change and optimize geothermal energy. Everything will run more efficiently, including hospitals, as ambulances supplies and operation times are optimized. It could even give us all more time. Biological clocks tick in our cells, but we know that adult cells can be reverted to stem cells. And some scientists, like Harvard's David Sinclair, now consider aging a medical condition. His team has successfully restored sight in mice by regenerating optic nerve cells. 
And they believe that what we consider cellular biological clocks are in fact involved in the aging process, which could be reversible. We weren't just protecting these nerve cells, we were literally reversing their age. The fact that we can reset the age of a cell and make it functional again, and have the right genes turn on and off as though they were young again, implies that there's a template, a store of information that's youthful, much like a backup copy of software that we can reset. The big question really is, where is that information stored? We're using it to generate these biological clocks. We use it for predicting which microorganisms are in your body, actually not predicting, telling you. Our daughter, um, Natalie, was infected with Lyme disease a few years ago, almost went blind from it. And the test took four days. And I thought, just give me the DNA from her spinal fluid. I'll go tell you what's in it. The amount of data that we generate now as biologists is just terabytes. It can be terabytes per week. It'll eventually be terabytes per day. Quantum computers will allow us to accurately simulate drugs to tackle diseases and the aging process using nature to unlock nature. While a lab chemist may be able to do an experiment per day, a quantum computer could do hundreds of thousands exploring cures for us and the Earth. Like all our great scientific battles, fighting climate change will bring incredible advances. The space race led to GPS and scanners that have saved millions from cancer. Our new battle demands an even greater leap. Fittingly, a Nobel Prize has just been awarded. Half for a model that reliably predicts global warming, and half for a new understanding of nature, from atomic to planetary scales.